Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. In today's video guys, we will show you how to remove and replace AC condenser guys on Dodge Dart. What we will be doing here guys, it should be exactly the same, okay, if you have guys Chrysler 200. Because both of them share the same chassis, the same design, the same engine, the same concept. So most of the parts are interchangeable. Now, will you guys have more than 200 videos guys on every car we get at the shop. So please guys, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment below, let us know if the video was helpful. First thing that we'll need to do, unfortunately guys, you need to drain your coolant, okay, before you remove the condenser. Because you have to remove the condenser with the radiator together, otherwise you will not be able to replace your condenser. Now we'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, uh, in addition guys, we we'll have uh, so much uh, information on the channel and I've seen people do it another way than us. Okay, we're going to remove the radiator and then remove the condenser. Some people remove the front bumper, headlights assembly, all that stuff. Get to it and remove the condenser from the front, which is doable as well. I think we'll have both of the scenarios on our channel. In today's video, we'll explain how to do it by removing the radiator. So let's start on it now. So, what do you need to do to drain the coolant, guys? Okay, you will need to, guys, uh, get the car on jack stand so you can get underneath it lift the front end up a little bit if you can uh, if you have a lift it, it will be even better okay you can see we have the front uh, tires a little bit in there just enough so we can get underneath the vehicle and if you come to the driver's side guys okay right here on the back side okay let me get there okay right here there is one drain plug for the radiator guys Okay, and that drain plug, you need to get pliers, okay, to get it loose. Counterclockwise, guys, to get that thing loose. Okay, like that, yep. Just turn it more. Uh, do that only when the coolant is cold, guys. Why? Because it can severely hurt you guys, burn you. So, uh, you want to minimize that risk. Wear gloves, eye protection. All that stuff, don't ask why we don't. And uh, what you need to do before you guys get that thing loose. Okay, let me explain quick before we continue. Your system may be under high pressure, guys. So, on cold engine, just open that cap a little bit, okay, to make sure that there is no, okay, pressure uh, before you get the plug loose. Okay, ours is good. Now I'm going to close it slowly. And that way the coolant will not leak out too fast until we resituate the, the bucket. So, let's show you now there. It will go, then it will stop. If it hasn't been, guys, okay. If it hasn't been turned for a long time, it will be... Okay, it will be that way. Okay, it starts leaking. You can see we open it. Now, <clears throat> let's see if that's enough. Okay, we'll see if we can turn it a little bit more, guys. Always use gloves, don't do what we do. Okay, we we'll need to get the pliers to turn it just a little bit more. Okay, this is it guys, like that. Okay, the whole plug came out. Okay, that's the whole plug. Now, what I'll do, okay, one person will hold the bucket. I'm going to go ahead and open the cap so it will not create any vacuum and everything will come out super fast. Okay, listen now. So we're going to let it drain, it will not take long, probably will take less than less than 2-3 minutes to drain the whole system and uh, we'll show you guys how much we get out of it. So we're ready guys, okay we can go ahead and install the plug, always guys, okay you have to inspect that o-ring on the drain plug, okay because that thing sometimes goes bad, you want to make sure that it's good, uh, lubricate it with coolant so we can install it easily, otherwise guys uh, it will be stuck. So uh, that's what we'll be doing now. Okay, we'll just go ahead and get it tight. 
usually if you uh, if you lubricate the plug and everything it will go by hand and you may be able to get it tight by hand with no problems guys just getting it out it's hard because it's really stuck and that o-ring is super dry so as you can see we have no problem installing it by hand and getting it tight okay perfect so that's uh, how much we drain we drain a little bit more than a gallon after we drain the coolant we will need to re remove and uh, get the radiator fan out of the way so let's do that and then we can get to the radiator so this is it guys as i said that 2.4 engine has been used on all the vehicles i mentioned this is the radiator fan that's what it looks like we removed a few things the exhaust manifold and stuff so i can show you but you practically don't need to remove anything Disconnect your car battery guys, okay we have a video how to disconnect it, always has to be disconnected when you are working on the fan because if it activates it will cut your fingers off. Now, let me show you guys okay what we need to do. We will need to get 8mm socket guys and right here, okay we have one bolt in that hole that we will need to remove. So this one will be with, uh, with 8mm socket, so we are going to come from like right here I think you will be able to see what is happening. A little bit better. Okay, check it out right here. So this is, I think it's a screw. In the plastic pan. Okay, perfect. This is what it looks like. Now, we guys have one just like that. Okay, but it's actually on this side right here and it's right behind the radiator hose okay and you just have to hold it and unscrew a little bit at a time as you can see guys it comes loose but it takes a little bit of time because This is screw, if it's a bolt usually they come off real easy, but screws guys, they have, um, they go in plastic, so they're made a little bit wider than the hole, so they can hold, and as a result, they don't come out as easy. If you guys have any questions, or you want to see a certain repair, drop a comment below guys. So, now right here guys, Okay, we need to disconnect the wiring harness for that fan. There is one thing on the clip back there that you push in. Okay, here. I just need to grab it with my hand. Pretty sturdy and pull it out. Okay, let me grab the connector so I can explain to you. Okay, this thing right here, this clip, press down right here and pull it out. Now guys, that fan, we we'll need to pull up. Okay, let's see what else is holding here now. If we have anything else holding. Okay, I do have a few things holding. Let me let me show you now. Okay, right here. We have wires guys that are connected to the fan. Okay, so that's a clip. Uh, and those wires will need to be disconnected from the radiator fan guys okay down there check it out I'm trying to get a little bit of light Okay, ah, I almost hit it. So from what I can see guys, that radiator fan will never ever come out without removing the radiator hoses, the upper and lower radiator hose. So, so now guys we'll disconnect uh, the radiator hose. Okay, so right here on the bottom. Okay, some things I'll be able to show you once we remove things guys. So there is one metal clip on the bottom hose they're like the BMW design that you pull up
Okay, and when you pull it up, guys, it's going to stay up. There is a special canal that it stays in. Okay, it's back there. And then grab the holes. Just shake it until it comes out. So eventually, guys, after you shake that thing for like 20 minutes, I'm not exaggerating, and taking breaks in between, it comes out. We're going to leak some coolant. So be prepared, guys. Even though you drain it, you still have just a little bit in the pipe here. So I'm just going to pull it to the side like that. And now, guys, the bad part, we need to disconnect the one on top here. What it, it's bad about it? Okay. Dodge doesn't like to use clamps that you can reuse, guys. So you have to install new clamps later. We have the clamps in the description of the video below. We'll have the link so you can see where we buy ours from. So we'll break that one loose now and uh, we'll continue. Let me get a screwdriver. Okay, something that I can hopefully open that clamp with and not break the radiator. Okay, because everything is super tight on this car, guys. Everything. So I'll just uh, see if I can get a screwdriver in and open that clamp now. Okay, guys, I got the screwdriver in. Okay, let me see if it's going to pop open now. Or oh, I think I think it's almost out. From what I can see, there is one little bitty thing still holding one tooth on the bottom. But I'll try to get a bigger screwdriver in and just pop it open now. So, finally guys, okay that thing came loose. Okay, it's still holding here and there a little bit. So. Okay, this thing is loose. Now, I just have that piece right here. Okay, this one came loose. So definitely a new clamp after that, guys. Always you have to get a new clamp after that. Okay, you can see this one is finally out. Believe it or not, it's out. Now, I'm going to just to wiggle that hose careful out of here so I don't break the radiator on top. I'm going to put it here so it's out of the way. Okay, like that. Now let's see if we can get the fan out. Okay, and I do. I can pull it out. The only problem is I have one more clip of wires holding down there. Okay, you can see one more clip of wires. I removed one right here and now we have a second one. Okay. Let me just remove that one because it's really, guys, such a limited room. Okay, came out. So, you can see just like that. So we need a small Torx now guys. I think it's a Torx 25 maybe. Okay, let me check. Yeah, it's 25 and I just picked the 20 accidentally. Uh, all the tools and parts guys that we use if you need to buy replacement parts or tools We'll, be, uh, we'll have the links in the description of the video below for your convenience. Now right here, okay, we have two bolts that we need to remove. That's for the radiator mount, guys. Okay, and those are two screws that are super hard to remove sometimes. They don't go easy. Nothing goes easy on this car so far, guys. I don't know if it just our dodge that way. Okay, that's what the screw looks like, pretty long. We have one more on this side. 
No, no, it's the bottom. A few of them. So with the hoses removed and everything, we don't have much left now, guys. I'll show you. Okay, what else we need to do in this a little bit? Okay, second screw out. Now, let's from there, we're going to point towards this side. You have one more bracket here, just like the other one. Okay, right here in the corner. Okay, right there. Now we have one more bolt towards the bottom and we have one holder that you need to release with wires and then remove the screw on the bottom. Okay, and after that, we don't have much left, I'll show you what else. Perfect, now guys, this Okay, I will grab a screwdriver. Let me grab a screwdriver quick. Okay, and we're going to gently pry that cap out. Okay, that's what it looks like. One more on this side, guys. So let's switch to this side now. Okay, perfect. Now guys, you grab your radiator. Okay, and from what it seems, okay, let me check. It might, let me see if the condenser is attached to it or if it's not. Yep, the condenser is attached to the radiator. So, you will need to drain your uh, Freon out of the AC system, guys. You can take it to a shop, they vacuum the Freon out, uh, never ever release it in the atmosphere because if you do, you will kill the ozone, guys. We already removed our compressor because we made a video how to replace AC compressor, so that thing is out of the way. Now, the only thing that I have to remove, okay, is one bolt here, okay, for the AC lines. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, okay, I'll just get a 13 millimeter socket quick. I'll get a ratchet, okay, and we're going to remove uh, to remove that bolt on. So again, guys, you know, uh, you have to drain uh, the Freon, otherwise that will be under enormous amount of pressure. It will sprain your eyes, it can cause your... Uh, you may lose your eyes, guys, so be careful. Always use eye protection as well. Uh, we removed, as you can see, the exhaust is removed, so we can have more room to show you where things are. Okay, this bolt is a little bit of a long bolt. Got it out. Now we should be able to disconnect. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead, grab it. Okay, let's see. Now guys, we have more problems. Okay, what do we have now? We have to remove the radiator. Okay, let me get those things in. The, the lines for the transmission. Why? Because the transmission guys cooler is attached to all this, the radiator and the condenser. So now that's what we'll be doing. So let me show you now quick where the lines are located. Okay, your transmission lines are all the way down here guys. So these things, okay, you pull them out like that. And we need to disconnect them. There is one little bit piece of metal that we're going to disconnect and I'll show you guys okay, how to remove it in a second. So I already guys uh, removed one of the transmission lines. So I'll remove the second one, show you how to do that. Okay, just uh, remove that cover, okay, like that. Let me zoom out a little bit because I cannot focus. And after that, you will need to guys uh, get a small screwdriver just get in here 
Oké, okay, dat springt. Niet to gently pull it out. Don't lose it, guys. This is the spring right here. I'll get it out. Okay, and now what we need to do, grab the line, have a container to catch all the fluid. Okay, and pull it out. And you can see, we're ready to go now. So now, guys, we're ready to pull the whole assembly of radiators out, I think. Okay, let's see if I have anything else. Okay, holding here. And we may have guys something holding. Okay, let me check quick. Because the transmission lines go through. Okay, I think I will be able to actually even disconnect uh, the transmission radiator. So Let's just see if I can do that now. I want to show you how we're going to do that. If it's going to come out or no, I don't know for sure. That's why some people remove the bumper guys to replace the radiator because it just, uh, it's just ridiculous. So let me show you what we have here. Okay, let me grab the camera quick. Right here guys, okay. We have a couple of clips that hold the radiator, the transmission radiator to the other ones. So practically we may not even be needing to remove it. Okay, you can see. But uh, what I will do now guys, okay and right here, I'm just checking to see what else, what else we have here and I don't see, okay anything else uh, right here I'll try to slide it out so let's hold the camera like that and see okay to see if i can pull this transmission core out okay it's out on one side ah and it got in so now guys you won't be able to do it without removing, okay, without removing that piece here. But the good thing, you will not need to disconnect, okay, you will not need to disconnect the transmission lines at all because uh, the transmission radiator will just stay in the front. Okay, so one clip is out. I'm just going to go ahead, keep doing that. Okay, we have another clip right here, guys. Okay, now we move here. So, <coughs> not a big fan of this car, guys, so far. Now we're going to move right here. We have another clip. I think we just have three more after that. Okay, last one right here in the corner. Now let me show you guys what else we will be doing here. Guys. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, and uh, we'll get a little impact gun so I can just remove them quick. Okay, and we have uh, four bolts that we need to remove. So let's start on the screws now. One here. Oh, I think it's okay. One here. The other two, I think they stay there. Okay, that piece comes out. Now it's not as much room as we hoped that we gain, guys. Okay, not as much. So this is part of the bumper. Practically this thing we cannot remove, but we can access a little bit through that hole to disconnect the transmission radiator. Okay, <laughs> which is right here. So 
Let's hold the camera okay like that. I'll see if I can. Just pull it out on the bottom now. Okay, perfect. And one more on this side, guys. Okay, you probably have no idea where I am right now, but okay, you can see right under that clip there. Will be another one. Ha! Huh, now the other one got back in on the other side. So by the time we get one out, you get one in and you just keep doing the exercise over and over again. So let's go on the other side and show you how I'm going to pull the radiator assembly out now. Maybe. The radiator hose got stuck here. Okay, we have one rubber insulation holding there. I have the AC lines that I need to get out of here. So I just need to pick one side, guys, and see okay, which side I'm going to remove first. Because these lines actually Attached to the radiator by a single clip, guys, the transmission lines. So if you keep messing with that thing, guys, if you give it another 25 to 30 minutes, okay, and you gotta make sure that you don't catch any cables in the way. I'm leaking coolant everywhere now. Okay, we'll be able to pull everything out, as you can see, just like that, guys. So now, 8mm socket, guys, we can uh, go ahead and remove, separate the condenser and the radiator, two screws on each side. Practically, you might be able to do that even without removing it. Okay, remember how we disconnected it? If you need to replace the radiator only, but for the condenser, you will have to remove both of them. Otherwise, you cannot get it out. This one, guys, okay. You can see, we separated them just like that. So as you can see, guys, the condenser came out. We separated it. That's where the transmission coolant attaches to, okay. And uh, the radiator just goes on the back side. If you need to buy a new one, we'll have the link, guys, in the description of the video below. We have the link where we buy free on coolant and all that stuff, so you have everything that you need for the repair. If you need to replace, guys, AC compressor or see how to vacuum the system, uh, we'll have a video coming as well. So please, guys, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or you have a Dodge Dart Kaiser 200, guys, that share the same design, and you have a specific question, okay, leave a comment below, guys. That way we'll get an idea and we'll, make a, we'll try to make a video for your problem. So thank you for watching and see you guys next time.